Oh, this you crazy mother... Yesterday was a truly awful day. All kinds of bad stuff happened, but the worst of which was finding out that somebody had dumped pounds of kitty litter down a drain. And you know what happens when somebody does that? It turns into concrete in your pipes. And our pipes are 70 years old. It's an older house. They're steel, iron, I guess. Uh, in any event, I am now the proud owner of a 25-foot drain snake and all kinds of other plumbing equipment, and I was able to get it done. But that, like I said, was just the tip of the iceberg. There was a lot of other bad stuff that happened. Leave your story down in the comments below so I don't feel so alone. But, you know, I needed a little bit of happiness. What makes a man happier than Boost? So we decided to take the Beast for a drive. I kind of ended up bodging it together a bit um, just so I could, you know, make this happen because I know we've all been dying to see is this thing actually going to work. And I was having some real problems installing this thing in the car. And by that, I mean, when I extended the, the motor wires, I have three of these made up. This is actually six gauge welding cable. I could not get the blower to turn. It would chug, it would it would violently shake to the point where it would actually unscrew our little mechanical fuse. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look back at some previous videos. But um, it was just really, really bad. In fact, I got to the point where I went out and bought some red Loctite because I just had blue here. And uh, even that, even after letting red Loctite cure overnight twice, it would still shake itself loose. I thought it was a tuning issue or a programming issue with the ESC. That turned out not to be the case. Uh, what it really was, was guess what? You can't have eight and a half foot long power wires to the motor from the ESC. It just, I guess, won't sync up. So sort of a last ditch effort, I decided to take two of those motor wires, like I said, they're right here, and run the power from inside the car to here. And um, give that a shot. Now I know when you extend ESC wires, power wires to that extent, you need a massive capacitor bank with relatively low ESR. I didn't have any capacitors with low ESR kicking around specifically. I mean, they weren't terribly high when I tested these guys. These are the three right here, but these are way overkill. This is a total of 66,000 microfarads of capacitance. ESR in series ends up being around 0.04, which isn't bad, it's probably good enough. Uh, the only thing that's a little sketchy is they're rated at 63 volts, and if we were running full power, that would be exactly 63 volts. However, under load, as we saw in the high power test, it drops down to 49 at best. So we might be okay with these. I might end up having to replace them. One thing I definitely do want to replace are these six gauge cables because if there's only two of them, uh, like there is if you're running the power cables as opposed to the motor uh, cables where there's three of them, then uh, four gauge is probably a better bet because there's about 5% loss there. So after yesterday's really horrible, terrible day, I bodged this thing together. A lot of zip ties in action here. I didn't even trim them. You can see them here, uh, right here. I mean, this thing is just clamped on. Just It's awfully close to the belt down there with those wires. Uh, but, you know, I just needed some boost, baby. So that's what we did. We took it out for a spin, and it did indeed make some boost. It actually works. So, you know, another thing is look at these horrible vacuum line routing over here. This is for the fuel pressure regulator, uh, which is down there. Uh, but, you know, I needed to tee that off so I could actually feed this uh, Chinesium blow-off valve, which, you know, I mean, before we start blaming the blow-off valve for the low boost numbers, don't. Um, because even if it was leaking, it wouldn't bleed off much. Um, but if you want to blame something for the low boost numbers, it was the battery voltage. I only ran 12 cells instead of 15, and they were only half charged. I did that on purpose. I did that because I still wasn't 100% confident in this whole mess that it would stay together and work out just fine. It turns out it did. Uh, and, you know, I had no idea what to expect. But hey, we made boost and we are now officially the most powerful electric turbo car in the world. Let's go inside the car so I can show you exactly where the battery levels were. And uh, you know, it'll give you an idea of how much more power there is to be had out of this mess. Before we get into the car, I wanted to share with you guys what the air filter looks like. So here we are, front of the car. And uh, I basically tucked the air filter up right there. There's the blower itself. It's actually not a bad location. There's a fender brace that I had to move and basically recreate. This is what I ended up making for it. This little piece that goes over. And for the time being, I'm just really kind of cheesily just zip tying this thing to keep it nice and consistent and in place right now if i recall correctly this thing is loose 
so I can take it off and there's our blower and it looks like nothing made contact with the the housing everything looks good there Let's see this is how it cogs you can hear it ironically as I mentioned you know this thing was pulling red Loctite on, out when it was chugging there's no Loctite in there anymore this thing just stays it's doing exactly what it's supposed to the fuse is doing exactly what it's supposed to now let's go inside the car and see where we were voltage wise all right this is the setup as it ended up being the ESC bracket still down there but I just like I said threw it underneath the uh, the hood just to make the thing work I've got the the boost servo tester all the way up the base one is all the way down where it needs to be and if you'll notice we are only running 12 cells there is room for the fourth battery this is the jumper for it the purpose of this little cell back here it's hard to get my arm back there sorry about that uh, the purpose of that little battery is just to run the electronics here I didn't want to cable it into the car just yet so let's take a look at what voltage level we were actually running so full voltage on full cells would be 63 volts uh, and remember from a high power test that we shot a little while ago, we could see 22.3 kilowatts. It's 22,300 watts. That's an awful lot of power. However, last night, in the interest of keeping things together, keeping myself alive and all that other happy jazz, you know, this was just a, let's see how she does. And this is what we were running with. This obviously is with no load. So... 45.1 volts so basically 45 volts which works out to 3.75 volts per cell fully charged would be about 4.2 volts per cell fully dead would be about 3.2 volts per cell so that's about half charge on 12 cells again instead of 15. so that translates into power from based on our tests again i don't have the instrumentation it's going to go here i've pulled out the stuff that was there before for the whipple uh, except for that switch obviously that actually controlled the uh, air to water pump intercooler pump to circulate the ice water through the core uh but that's going to be replaced with this stuff so this is actually a voltmeter and a temperature gauge this is an ammeter it reads up to i think i don't know some ridiculous amount 400 amps which actually that's not that ridiculous because we hit 387 so you know we may actually tap that guy out but you know with the, the extended power cables there's going to be some drop in there so while we hit 387 amps before i don't think we're going to necessarily do that now i think most likely we're going to cap out somewhere around 20 kilowatts um when we ultimately get there but again just to give you an idea i think that we ran last night i think that we ran somewhere around seven eight kilowatts so there's a whole lot more power to be had so don't be disappointed in the boost numbers be happy that they're positive the whole way through because those numbers are going to do nothing but go up now let's go take a look so i wanted to describe what was going on before you see it so you could listen to it basically i rolled into the throttle gently to get to wide open throttle i waited a few seconds before i hit the vtech yo so that way we could see how long it takes to ramp up and everything else i set the data logging to trigger based on rpm at 3500 rpm because i knew i could get above that pretty easily based on the converter flashing and that's it so look for me rolling into the throttle then look for me to push the button and you'll hear the car pick up and here it is All right, so that was pretty awesome. Obviously, we saw boost. I looked it up and uh, looked it up on the drag times DA calculator just to see what the DA would have been uh, last night. It would have been about 1,200 some odd feet. Um, I looked, sadly, at Capital Raceway's location. If you haven't never checked out the DA calculator, it's a good one. It's dragtimes.com, I believe. Uh, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, Capital Raceway is no more, but at least they still have that as a reference point, and that's 30 miles away from here. So it gives me a good idea of what to expect. That particular altitude translates to roughly uh, 100 kPa. So that gives us a baseline of what wide open throttle naturally aspirated with no restrictions should look like and we can figure out what the uh, restriction level of the blower actually is or the electric turbo or the electric vortex uh, depending on what we're calling it but right now we're calling it the electric turbo
I rolled into the throttle, as you heard in the pull, kind of gently, and I have the data log set to trigger at 3,500 RPM. So indeed it did trigger at 3,500 RPM. Uh, in fact, uh, the cyan line will give you data at that particular point and the information shows up over here, just so we have a point of reference and you know what you're looking at. So the green line is throttle position and my throttle position down here is 91%. RPM is 3579. That's pretty much where uh, the data log started. Uh, you can see that boost was effectively negative 0.09. So there is, and down to negative one here. So there is a significant restriction down in this lower graph. You have basically the same trace, but in a different set of units in KPA. So this is this yellow line is 92.2 KPA MAP, manifold absolute pressure. So the blower is a fairly significant restriction. The white line here is RPM, and I just kind of let it cook for a little bit. In fact, uh, before I hit the button, in fact, if we do this, it gives us a duration for 1.6 seconds, pretty much more or less before I hit the button. And it also down here in the bottom tells you the averages, the minimum, the maximum, and the delta, which is the change. Uh, in some cases, the delta does not exactly jive. I'm not sure why. But uh, the average minimum and maximum do, in fact, um, always makes sense. So we're looking at this area here. So you can tell the blower was a fairly significant restriction. Again, 91.5 map here, uh, you know, 91.0 map here. So out of a potential 100 KPA, uh, it was a pretty good restriction. And, you know, RPM was rising because we were at wide open throttle. But then the VTEC kicked in. So at this point, this somewhere around here is where I hit the button and you could see the blower ramp up. And if we take this period from here to here from the blower getting up to speed, it took, yeah, let's call it also about 0.6 seconds. So I have control over that in the ESC programming. I could slow that way down, I could speed it up. This is actually probably good, maybe a little bit aggressive when we start hitting it with some actual real power. Uh, but you know, it still looks pretty good. Now what's interesting to me here is the white line I said is RPM. This car has a power glide in it. So what you're seeing here in this jump of RPM, which is almost linear with uh, the boost, is it, obviously this indicates an increase in power and you could see that in the pull. So once the impeller got up to speed, we saw a maximum boost of two PSI. Down here it says it's 112.6 uh, KPA on the map, but if we step through it, uh, the actual peak ends up being 112.9. You can see here on this side of the graph, that's the maximum that figure that you see. Our, uh, um, let's see, our mat, our manifold air temperature sen uh, sensor was giving us, uh, that's this white line down here in the bottom of the graph, it was giving us actually declining readings. And that's simply because, honestly, it was not making a whole lot of boost. But it was making boost, and this motor makes roughly 500 horsepower flywheel at 6,150 RPM naturally aspirated. So that makes this the most powerful electric turbo car in the world. Even frankly, if it was a restriction, I could still make that claim, but I'm pleased to say that it actually was boost positive, even running about a third of maximum power that we could feed that motor um, in terms of wattage. Wattage is really all that matters. Again, if you look back in the other videos, you could see I hit a peak of 22,300 kilowatts. Here we were probably hovering around seven, eight, nine kilowatts maybe, um, which is why the boost numbers are low, but you know, not to put too fine a point on it, I wanted to make sure the thing wouldn't chunk an impeller, eat a bunch of aluminum pieces, just make sure everything worked, and of course it did. That's why I'm a happy man. So we look at this, you can see as RPM increases, obviously the, the voltage dropped on the battery pack as well. Unfortunately, I didn't have all the instrumentation I needed hooked up, uh, but we will when we do a, a real full power test, and I obviously can't do that um, on, you know, uh, it needs to be a very controlled environment, let's put it that way. And we've got something lined up, a place where we can actually do that. But, you know, this is this is as much as I felt safe doing. So it, you could see the boost drop, and it drops more or less linearly as RPM rises. Uh, again, it never goes below 1.1 uh, pounds. And, you know, I lifted at roughly... 
4,935 RPM, so just shy of 5,000 RPM. Uh, but again, the boost does drop and we expect that because it's basically a fixed uh, impeller speed. So it's a fixed amount of air out as long as we don't go into surge, which I think I mentioned earlier, I was able to get it into surge with the motor, not with the engine, not running in the car, uh, the gas pedal wide open and, uh, the blow off valve disconnected, but it should never go into surge when the engine's running because basically what's going to happen is as the impeller speed builds up it's going to push against the converter rpm will rise and horsepower will go up so that's why i really don't see the need right now to ramp up the impeller or control it based on rpm in any way shape or form you know i'm going to take all the power i can get after all a drag race is one at the starting line honestly so we want as much power on the leave as we can get so there you have it. That is basically um, it. I'm not really too worried at this point about AFR or Spark Advance. You know, I think the, let's look at Spark Advance actually. So maximum is 34 degrees. I found on the dyno, this thing actually makes max, max power at 25 degrees. My timing pointer is three degrees off, so it's really 28 degrees of timing. But for purposes of looking at data logs and such, 25 degrees is the magic number. And if you look at the green trace down here, it's at this point it's at 22.6 and it starts going up as rpm goes up and that's related to not having too much timing closer to peak torque and you can uh, advance timing as you go up in rpm but really i could have pushed another you know i could have pushed this thing to, to max timing easily but we're not concerned with that yet uh, really that's going to be that's going to come into play when we get this thing on the dyno and we start tuning it for the power uh, for the most power we can make and then of course we're going to take it to the track but the next test is going to be uh, a full power test hopefully hopefully everything goes well we have a, a cool place i think you guys are really going to dig that place to, to do this testing it's it's not a public road uh it's not you know it's it's a nice safe area um, and especially with the COVID thing going on, there's not a whole lot of people there either. Um, so it should be perfect for that. So there you have it. Uh, the world's most powerful electric turbo car made some boost. Finally, not much, but you know, enough to make the claims. And I think ultimately, by the way, with this compressor and volume, we can see maybe four to six PSI, which would put us somewhere in the ballpark. I definitely don't think it's going to make less than 575 horsepower at the flywheel. Uh, could make as much as 650 with this uh, impeller wheel and volute. And then, you know, hopefully we can track down uh, an SI impeller wheel and volute. It's a more efficient setup. It does better at lower RPMs. I think we could pick up at least an easy another 50 horsepower out of that guy. And, uh, you know, we'll see how fast we can get this thing to go. But I bet you guys any money it's a 10-second ride. Um, you know, it, it definitely, you know, I know this car very well. I've had it for, geez, close to 30 years at this point. Maybe not quite, but more than 25. Uh, you know, it's been through all kinds of blower iterations and everything else. And I can tell you, if we dyno at 450 rear wheel horsepower, you're looking at you know, a 10.5 or a 10.7 pass. Of course, that depends on optimized gearing and everything else, but that, that's going to be about right. And it's going to be about 127, 128, maybe 129 miles an hour, somewhere in that ballpark. I think ultimately, uh, you know, the best pass is made with the Whipple belt-driven setup uh, was a 983 at 140 miles an hour. And that was on Q16, uh, which is oxygenated, so it makes more power. On pump gas, uh, we saw a 988, I think at 137 or 138 miles an hour. Uh, we've got some pretty cool dyno testing in the works coming up as well. So, you know, this is kind of big news. It's not big power, but it's considerably bigger power than any other electric turbo so far. Uh, and I think we can do a heck of a lot better. I think we've got at least another, you know, at least another 150 horsepower we're gonna get out of this setup pretty much as it sits. So stay tuned and subscribe.